of college football. Both teams here, Hampton and Elizabeth City State, looking to start off 2019 on the, you know, the right foot. Hampton begins their inaugural season in the Big South. Elizabeth City State looking to bounce back from a one and seven record a year ago. So two teams both trying to prove something here in 2019, T.O. Well, looking at Hampton, I think they're going to be looking to kind of continue where they left off. If you recall last season, they finished with a six game winning streak. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that coach is going to look to coach Poon is going to look to keep that going. Um, as they come out here, you know, they have new uh, bunch of returning stars, 11, 13 returning starters in total, six on offense, seven on defense, which is definitely a plus for the Pirates as you look to kind of continue that continuity building this season. And uh, with the addition of a couple of pieces here, um, this looks to be an exciting season for the Pirates. And we'll talk about one of those key additions here in a few minutes, uh, T.O., but as you mentioned a year ago, Hampton, 7-3 and three overall under first-year head coach Robert Prunty, came to Hampton, by the way, as uh, from the Conference USA in East Carolina University. A, uh, an alumnus of Alabama A&M actually played for two years here at Hampton before transferring. So someone who was new yet familiar to Hampton leading the ship, whereas now on the other side of the football, Elizabeth City State, uh, Coach Anthony Jones, we talked about how last year uh, was not the season he wanted, one and seven. However, his overall career record as a head coach, 102 and 77, has been coaching 16 years. So you know he knows how to coach, just beginning to build a program here with the Vikings. And that's the thing. This, is his, this will be his second year as well at Elizabeth City State. Um, if anybody knows Coach Jones from Alabama and a and he has some really great teams down there in the SWAT. So they'll be tough. They're going to want to run the ball, establish the run, and control the clock. Um, and keep your offense off of the field, but he's a hard-nosed, gritty guy. His team's going to be much of the same. That first year, a lot of time, it's kind of like building that culture, building that uh, character in your team. So this year, you'll look to see more of that. Um, and they have an addition at quarterback as well. I think they're counting on um, young man De'Aubrey Smith to really catapult them this year into uh, some great things this season. Yeah, we talk about newcomers at quarterback first. We'll start with one Mr. DeAndre Francois, a young man who for three years uh, played down in Tallahassee, not at Florida A&M for those HBC football fans that are used to hearing Hampton and Tallahassee. No, he played across the street. Florida State was a starter there for uh, both coach uh, Jimbo Fisher as well as Willie Taggart. Uh, left the program last year comes to Hampton as a graduate student. He graduated from Florida State in three years. So we do believe he still has two years of eligibility. Uh, need to get that uh, squared away with, you know, the uh, NCAA. But a young man who comes here with a lot of poise, a lot of pedigree. This is a young man who's played in some of the biggest stages in college football, played in the BCS, played against Alabama, has played, you know, in some of those high-ranking, high-profile matchups now comes here to Hampton looking to uh, begin his uh, college career new. And I think they'll look to him for some of that leadership and some, especially as they get into the meat of the schedule and they play some of those tough opponents. Um, having been in those positions, they'll really count on him to lead them through them. Um, and I'm excited to see what this young man can do. Uh, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure most of the fans out there know about all the other things that may have gone on, but um, here he is with a chance to kind of redeem himself and and show what type of person he really is. And, and for those of us who are alumni of HBCUs, we know that's what the HBCU is all about uh, for a lot of young men. That's right. DeAndre will be wearing number three for the Pirates this year. So we'll be looking to him. Uh, he'll be a captain for this team along with uh, a wide receiver, a name that Hampton fans know very well. It's been called for several years here. Another graduate student, Ronald Bell, the five foot six senior, or excuse me, graduate student out of the uh, Washington, D.C., Maryland area. Uh, they're actually roommates uh, on campus, so you already know they've been working on their chemistry literally since day one, continuing to develop that quarterback wide receiver. Uh, a rapport you would like to see between two of your upperclassmen. Another uh, captain for this Hampton team is number 97, 
Desmond Sertivon, another grad student, the 6'1", 300-pound deep tackle by way of Greensboro, a young man who has really been a rock in this program and a, a leader, a student leader that Coach Prunty could really lean on a year ago. And one other is Oral Viserian, another graduate student. As you see here, a lot of senior leadership here for Hampton, a young man, uh, Viserian, a DB out of Lithonia, Georgia. So he's going to come with Sturdivant, with Bell, and with Francois to really try and lead this Pirate team in their inaugural voyage into the Big South. And I'll tell you, as a former coach and a player and any coach in America, tell you that senior leadership is important. When you have guys out there with the maturity and the experience of being through some battles, um, it really can can be a, a great crutch for the coach to lean on to carry it through these tough moments. Yeah, so your captains for the Vikings, I saw down there, number one, Smith, the redshirt junior quarterback, number 18, Sean Briggs, the senior linebacker out of Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Two of the four captains down there as both teams flip. We will wait to get the results of the coin flip as both teams are at midfield. And it looks like Elizabeth City deferred into the second half, so I'm pretty sure Hampton will receive the ball here to start the game. There you have it. Hampton's going to receive the kickoff, um, and they'll actually have, they'll be going into the win to start off this first half. Pirates will be coming out here onto the field, led by the Pirate. It is, again, the home opener here for Hampton. It's Alumni Day, so a pretty large contingent of blue and white here. Both teams showing a lot of support. Elizabeth City, Tio, as you know, not far away, just about a good 45 minutes to an hour ride down the highway. So they got a great contingent of fans here. Uh, and this will be an interesting uh, opening drive here to start the game as uh, Elizabeth, City, Elizabeth City definitely will look to rebound defensively if they were not very strong on that side of the ball, giving up over 350 yards per game. So Hampton actually was pretty good offensively, and they have those returning starters, Will Robinson, uh, Sean McKenzie um, in the backfield and a host of receivers. Uh, this would be a good test early for the Pirates and for Elizabeth City State um, to see uh, just where they stand on both of those sides of the ball. Yes, as we said, both fan bases here and energized year two for both coaches. A lot of excitement. Hampton fan base really wants to see what they've got at quarterback now with Francois. You see him down there warming up on the sideline as the special teams unit will head out onto the field doing the kicking here. For Elizabeth City will be number 40, Jonathan Buck. And we're back here at Armstrong Stadium. We are set and ready. Elizabeth City, Jonathan Buck, the freshman kicker out of Williamston, North Carolina. It's a way. It's going to be a squib. It will be recovered at the 32 by the Pirates. Looking to turn the field was number 38. That was Damon Woodcock, Jr., the senior tight end out of Norcross, Georgia. And the Pirates will start out with great field position across their own 40-yard line. Well, you can tell Elizabeth City did their homework. They knew not to kick it deep back there to Bell, who was waiting on the return. Um, I'm pretty sure um, coaches were prepared for him to go ahead and, um, and take that thing to the house. They wanted to make sure he did not touch the football. Pirates offense will come out here for their first series. There was a flag thrown on the play. They, I didn't hear what it was, but it was a five-yard penalty. So Pirates will start here on their own 43. Pirates start out showing three wide, two split backs in the backfield. Bell in motion. 
It's going to be a handoff to Shai McKenzie, and he's had some room to work. Across the 50, 45, 40, 30, 15, 28. Almost had an opportunity to break it, but a great opening run here for McKenzie. Great misdirection there by Hampton by sending Bill in motion. You saw the defense adjust, thinking they were looking for the uh, bubble screen pass to him. The handoff to McKenzie off the left side. Uh, almost hit his head on the goal post. Good to see McKenzie back out on the field for the Pirates. He was bit by an injury bug a year ago and never really was able to get his season going. Going to fake the play action to McKenzie. Francois over the middle to his tight end. Pitch and catch made there by number 88, Paul Richard Jr. out of Detroit. And again, you see Hampton speeding up the tempo, trying to get to the line. A lot of coaches have their first 25 plays scripted to start the game, so uh, Hampton's ready to go and uh, takes a step. And there is Shai McKenzie around the right side this time, picks up the first down, be first and goal for the Pirates here inside the 10. Pirates showing that high up-tempo offense. Another first down for Hampton. Francois gets the offense set, four receiver set. Goes back to McKenzie up the middle. Good job by the Vikings, able to get there and clog up the hole. Tackle made by number 43. That was Chris Little, the senior D lineman out of North Carolina. Now McKenzie's going to come out, and now the, the speedster, uh, Will Robinson, is going to check in. You can see Pirates early on really looking to establish the run game, um, something they did very well. Real Robinson, the returning uh, leading rusher from last season. Yeah, Robinson a year ago, a yard shy of 800. Really picked up his season towards the middle. Going to the end zone, incomplete. Catch was made, but the receiver, Dana, just could not get a foot down. The foot came down right on that sideline. Good call by the official. That's that moment when you wish you were a 10 and a half instead of an 11. Uh, right on the line, big toe kind of touched the white line before he came down. Good call by the ref there. But great throw by uh, Francois, great catch. Um, I'm sure we'll see that combination over the course of the season here. Third and goal here. Francois under pressure, going to run from it. He's going to tuck it. He's going to be able to walk across the goal line. Touchdown, Pirates. Francois able to walk into the end zone. And the Pirates put six on the board here on the opening drive. And that's the benefit of having that guy out there. He felt the pressure, able to get eluded. Um, and has the wheels to beat the guys to the corner. Uh, had a throw or run option there. Just felt safer keeping it in his own hands and running in. Great job by the Pirates. Great opening drive. And that was the test I think both teams wanted to see. Elizabeth City wanted to see how they would respond defensively. Pirates wanted to see if they could keep that continuity going from last year, how, how good they were offensively. Lomax in for the extra point. It was a bad snap and the kick is short, no good. And that'll take us to the media timeout. Pirates lead early, 6-0. to zero. We'll be back. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. And welcome back to Armstrong Stadium here in Hampton, Virginia. Um, as we're ready for this kickoff, uh, Hampton up 6-0 early here in the first with 12.47 left to go. Deep to receive for the Elizabeth City Vikings is number 23, Zion Riddick. And number seven, uh, Kendrick Patterson. Lomax prepared to kick off. Lomax much better kick this time than on the extra point try and the Vikings will return. Turn man's gonna go down just shy of the 25. Really? For the kickoff return. 
Riddick, decent return there for the Vikings. So their first drive of the 2019 season will begin at approximately their own 23. Pirates looking, I think, uh, really um, can continue to build on this unit. They were pretty good defensively last year. Uh, they do have a few key players from last year they need to replace, uh, but the wealth they have returning in the secondary, I think, will provide um, the Pirates a lot of cover as they um, meld this unit together. Quarterback under center, and there's the reverse. It's going to take a shot downfield. Pass is going to be intercepted. We got uh, two flags thrown here back on the near sideline. It looks like they're against Elizabeth City, so the Pirates will decline. Interception there. Yeah, it was against, I believe, an offensive lineman. I believe they said 66, Todd Barker Jr. Hampton declines. Interception made by Christian Angelo. Well, that brought back some memories seeing number 10 back there making some plays. Why is that, Tia? Ah. Did you wear that number? Reminded me of a young man from Chicago back there that used to roam the secondary back in the days. Chance the Rapper went to Hampton? <laughs> uh, not quite, not quite. By chance, am I standing next to that guy? <laughs> I think you are. Okay, Travis Oliver, one of the Hampton greats on defense. You know, I guess it runs in the number, number 10. Every, every play I've seen step in that jersey have always done great things here at Hampton, so. Well, the Pirates now first and 10 from the 50. It's a four receiver set, two to the right, one top of the formation. Francois looks over the D's, got plenty of time, under pressure, steps through the pressure, crosses the 45 to the 40, still on his feet across the 30, 25 to the 20 before he's forced out of bounds and wisely avoids contact after a 30-yard pickup on the ground. Great run by Francois, but looked like at a cost. We had the lineman coming out the field, Kelvin Watts, the red shirt sophomore uh, from Chesapeake. Looked like he has a shoulder injury. Uh, just barely made it to the sideline. Uh, hopefully that young man's going to be okay. Pirates make some substitutions here. Seven seconds on the play clock. Pirates stay in the same three receiver set. It's gonna go to McKenzie up front. He'll gain a yard, maybe two. It looks like Elizabeth City was ready for that set that time. That was the set from the first play of the game where Sean McKenzie off the left side ripped off a big run. Uh, looked like they made the adjustment to the set and was able to uh, stop it for a short game. Second and 10 here, they're going to say McKenzie got back to the 15, the original line of scrimmage. Francois has McKenzie to his left. Looks over the defense. Looking, looking. Hits McKenzie out of the backfield. Pass just a step behind his running back. Try to go to the check down. Just off the mark was Francois. And that's the timing piece right there as they got to work on that, you know, uh, Francois showing up right at the start of camp. He didn't have the summer to kind of work with those guys. Uh, and then that clock going back off in his head. You can see him kind of getting antsy as the pressure builds around him. That's when he know he got to step up in that pocket and go ahead and escape with his legs or, or get that ball away a lot quicker. Francois was the number one dual threat quarterback in his recruiting class coming out of high school. And we've seen him display both the arm and the feet here on this drive. Pirates have four seconds on the play clock. They get it off. Go to Will Robinson off the left. We got a flag coming in from the line of scrimmage. See if someone jumped or if a Viking lined up in the neutral zone. Uh, that's the long, that flag is normally that, or the receiver wasn't on the ball and covering up that, that tackle at the end. So it's going to be one of those two calls. And it looks like he's pointing against Elizabeth City. So and those are the penalties that... You know, early in the season, you expect a couple of them, but you really want to eliminate as many of those as possible. Because uh, those are the penalties that really hurt you, the, the alignment errors and those mental errors. So, Pirates. Take the penalty. The penalty was charged against Chris Little. Lining up in the neutral zone. 
Handoff to Robinson, runs into some trouble, and the Vikings do a great job of recovering there after the initial contact was made by Lawrence Brown, grad student out of Hollywood, Florida, linebacker, six foot two, made a play right there, showed his veteran leadership. And was able to drive him back, and now we're looking at probably about second and eight. Um, I would look for the Pirates, probably go to air here, some type of play action. Uh, or fade route something outside here with the one-on-one -on -one coverage they were seeing from the uh, secondary. Francois pump fakes, puts it up in the air, has a receiver just a little too far. Intended receiver was number 81, Jadikus Bonds, the sophomore out of Williamson, North Carolina. I'm sure the Pirates are hoping to minimize that. Again, that's one of those miscommunication areas. The receiver, um, I, he looked like he thought there was supposed to be another play call, uh, but... Francois, so again, was looking for the fade, which we thought would happen. Uh, but they just got to – that's up. Again, you'll see that get cleaned up as the season progresses. Yeah, you could tell they were trying to take advantage of Bonds and his six foot four frame. They go back to him, and somehow, someway, breakdown in coverage. Rodriguez, the DB, was looking in another direction, and Bonds walks right into the end zone for the easy touchdown. So two drives for the Pirates, a scoring touchdown on the run, a passing touchdown for Francois. So now 12 to zero is our score. The only blemish on the afternoon so far for Hampton was the poor execution on special teams on the last extra point. We'll see if the Pirates improve here for their second opportunity. And you can see on that play with Rodriguez, uh, they were in man-to-man -man coverage. It just looks like he thought he was supposed to go with the fade. He thought the fade was coming, and he uh, gave him the option route. Extra point is up and good. 13-0 to zero is our score. So, so far, so good for the Pirates. Francois showing that leadership at quarterback involving several different players. That time it was Bonds on the receiving end of the touchdown. And that's what you kind of want to see here. If you're the Pirates, you're, you're pretty happy with what you've seen so far um, out of your offense. Uh, of course, defense is only out there to play uh, with the interception. So you kind of want to get a chance to see what they can do on this drive, uh, see how they're going to respond to some adversity. Uh, but so far, so good. If you're the Pirates coach, you Elizabeth City State, um, you've done some good things. But again, the, I think the size and the, the talent gap there between the two teams right now is just taking a toll here even this early in the game. Yeah, I talked to Pirate assistant coach Marcus Dixon before the game, and he said that on defense, the Pirates were going to be expecting Elizabeth City to come out with a bit of the trickeration and trying to find different ways to get people involved. And you saw that from the first play. Unfortunately, lack of execution for Elizabeth City State resulted in the interception, as I believe it was uh, the running back on that reverse forcing the situation and... The Pirates able to capitalize as a nice end over and kick to Lomax will come down right inside the 10 yard line. And the return man will be brought down right at the, tw the 20, 21 yard line. That was Riddick on the return. And we've got a timeout. We'll be right back. You're watching ESPN Plus. Back here on ESPN Plus, Matt White, Travis Oliver. Pirates with the early 13-0 lead here on a humid day in Hampton, Virginia. Elizabeth City, second drive of the afternoon. Only had one play on their first drive after the interception on the reverse. It's going to be a quarterback keeper here for Smith. And the defense will converge. Vasarian as well as number 52, Falk, in on the stop. Might have lost a yard on the run. And, uh, yeah, and Smith had some wheels, but I think he wasn't really ready for how fast that defense was. That they were able to track him down um, on that quarterback option play. Uh, he was trying to look downfield. Uh, but the defense able to close in on him really quickly. Second down for the Vikings. They break the huddle here. Got... 10 seconds on the play clock here. Come out showing four wide, three receivers to the left, one single receiver at the top, and going to be the option handoff to the tailback. 
pick up of maybe a yard back to the original line of scrimmage. I'm interested to see what the Pirates going to do here. Third and long, this early in the season, do you dial up some of your pressures to try to at least get them on film, or uh, do you kind of sit here and play it vanilla, keep, keep the game in front of you, just get off the field on third down? Vikings need to get to their own 31-yard line to keep this drive alive. Same formation, one back split to the right of the quarterback. Smith, under pressure from Sertivon, tries to spin away, able to get away, throws it, has the receiver incomplete. Pass intended for Davidson, but great pressure up front. We talked about Sertivon at the beginning of the game. He's mad at himself. He didn't get the sack, but Pirates will take the result of the play. Brings up fourth down, and Bell will be at about his own 45-yard line looking to receive the punt here from I believe that's number 17 Yarborough back there. So we have to watch him. He's listed as a wide receiver, so may have some wheels back there. You don't think the Vikings would fake it at this stage in the game, but always have to be cautious. Snap is away. It's going to be a short kick. It's going to go out of bounds maybe around the 30-yard line. Not a great kick at all. Pirates will be starting deep in Viking territory here on this drive. Yeah, it's. I, I think their game plan, even with that, was not to kick it to, to Bill. So you can tell he tried to angle it to the sideline and just uh, not really able to get the ball. And I think rushed it a little bit, maybe felt the pressure, even though the Pirates really weren't coming after of it. Uh, so the, the officials will mark it out of bounds at the 35. So that's about a net gain of maybe eight yards on that punt. And the Pirates are taking, you know, you get a score here, uh, kind of start thinking about putting this game away by halftime and start getting some of those down the line guys in and getting some reps. Uh, the mindset kind of changes here if you can get a score and go up 20-0 here early in the first. It looked like there's an issue with the ball. I think they had Elizabeth City's ball still out there. Yep, so officials will make the swap. And it'll be first and 10 for Hampton at the Viking 35-yard line. Both drives have ended in touchdowns for Hampton. Bell in motion. Francois hands off to McKenzie right up the middle. Pick up of about five yards there. Ball out to the 30-yard line. He's not an easy guy to bring down at 5'11", 225. Uh, enough of those collisions to make your arms get a little short on some of those tackles. So I look for him probably to break one off here soon, uh, the way he's running hard downhill at the, at the defense. Second and five. Again, McKenzie will go left. He's going to turn the corner. He's got a first down and some all the way to the end zone. Touchdown, Hampton. Haven't been out there and had to tackle some of those big guys. It gets hard when those big boys get get that, that weight going downhill. Uh, it makes you think twice about some of that contact. Uh, but that I think I would give most of the credit there to the offensive line as they were able to get him around to the edge. And even the receivers doing a great job of blocking downfield. Uh, the Pirates are really executing and looking really good here, really crisp and sharp um, here on offense as, they ex as they're executing at a high rate. Special teams is on the field for the extra point. Snap down, kick is up, and the kick is good. Minus that earlier missed extra point. Hampton hitting on all cylinders here in the first quarter, leading out 20 to zero. So far, you really have to say the defense has played well. The offense has played well. But T.O. is a former player and a former coach. What are you saying on the sideline of Elizabeth City State as Coach Jones or one of the senior leaders of this team to uh, try and get your troops rallied here in this first quarter? Well, if you're the offense, you, you've done a couple of good things on that earlier play, the trick play. They actually had the receiver behind the defense just with a poor throw by the, uh, the quarterback at that time, more the person throwing the ball. Uh, defensively, uh, you just got to get out there and play. You're playing for pride at this point. You're playing for pass. You're playing out there to, to try to at least come out of here respectable. Uh, so you're just challenging each other. You know, you're doing it respectfully, but you're challenging the players. You're challenging each other. 
to go out there and just execute, do your job, see if we can get a series, see if we can win a play, um, and try to build on that momentum and hopefully change things and turn this thing around at some point. Pirates have the ball teed up. Lomax set to kick here from his own 35. It's a high end over end to the right sideline. It will be returned again by Elizabeth City. Good move here, avoiding some tackles. Lomax was right there to force the return man out of bounds. That was Riddick again. He found a lane. You heard the first signs of life out of the Elizabeth City State crowd over there, uh, T.O. They saw uh, the first real play for the Vikings to get excited about here this afternoon. And sometimes that's all it takes is, is that, that thing, that big mo you hear about. Big, that big mo. sometimes it swings off crazy plays like that, even though that wasn't a touchdown. But to get some excitement, some energy in your crowd and your teammates kind of get kind of can feed off that. So hopefully for Elizabeth City State, they're hoping that's something that can kind of start building into some success here offensively. Best field position of the day for the Vikings. First and 10 at their own 40. Smith under center. Looks to hand off to the tailback. He's going to be brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Tackle was number 54, Mason King. And the Pirates defensively continue to flex their muscle here against the Vikings. You see the Vikings kind of switch it up. They went to a traditional two-back set. A lot of offenses nowadays don't really use a fullback, um, but I guess they figure, you know, they've been having trouble with keeping up with that speed or trying to get outside on half. So they switch it up to try to get downhill uh, with something. Um, I would look here probably some play action off of, off of this eye set. Two receivers here to the left, as you said, the offset eye formation. Which sends a receiver in motion. That's Bellamy. Smith looking to his right, now comes back left. Has a man in double coverage. Receiver was green, but running step for step with them was Pirates Donald Smith, Richard Jr. out of Danville, Virginia. Dangerous throw there by Smith. At least he put it in a position where it was more than likely going to go out of bounds. And, this, and that's the thing about the Pirates when you get them in this situation. Their strength right now is the secondary. Uh, they have the, probably the most returning starters of any part of their defense back there, um, or the most experienced. So uh, I think the Pirates would think we want you to try to throw the ball. Um, and Smith was in excellent coverage in phase, step for step with the receiver. Third and 10, ball needs to get to the 50 for the Vikings. They go with the ground game. He's going to be about five yards short. Is the tailback. Tackle was made by Brown. Again, you talked about it, Richard Sr., DB out of New Jersey, so that secondary continues to make plays here. Forces fourth down. Bell back to return for Hampton. It's going to be at about his own 25-yard line. It looks like that's Yarbor again back to punt for the Vikings. It'll be interesting to see how they attacked this uh, last time they tried to angle it out of bounds. Bad snap. Yarbrough able to recover it. Much better punt. It's going to be a hanger. Bell's going to have to fair catch it at probably about his own 19. So much better punt for Elizabeth City. It helped having better field position making that punt. So now we'll see the Pirates with, I believe, what's going to be there. And I say this with quotations. Worst field position here today. They're going to be... They're going to give uh, Bell the 22-yard line on that fair catch. So, Pirates. The Pirates, I think, are actually, you kind of happy about this because you, you love those short field positions. Uh, but in a game like this where you really want to work on some things, you want to get a chance to see how certain plays work in certain field positions, uh, you're kind of excited you get a chance now to put together a a long drive and kind of see somehow some of those plays you've designed or worked on all camp will work in these game situations. Pirates come out, four receivers. Looks like Robinson's the single back in the backfield. No, that's Bell in the backfield. They're going to give it to him. He's going to turn the corner at the 20, 25. He's hit. The ball came loose. He took a massive shot. He got up okay. I think the ball went out of bounds, so will remain with Hampton, but he took a hit. Yeah, those, those, those normally draw the ball loose. That DB had a uh, beeline on him. He locked in on him. Um, and I think they've been waiting on that play. They kind of know that's 
uh, staple for Hampton. Bell going to return the favor here as he takes the ball across the 40-yard line. This is what Coach Prunty likes to do. He's going to get the ball in the hands of his playmaker. So Bell listed at a wide receiver, lines up for two plays at running back, and that second one shows how dangerous he can be once he gets the ball. But I think it shows how tough he is, too, to take the hit. And you saw his body get kind of twisted up in there. And then the next play to take the carry and gain 10, 12 yards on the run in the backfield shows you just how tough he is. And Francois is going to at least one deep. Has a receiver just a little too strong on the throw. A great read by Francois. Just a little too much on the throw. Uh, I know he would love to have that pass back. We're looking here at second and long for the Pirates uh, with 436 here to go in the first quarter. It's seemingly been a long first quarter as the Pirates have uh, been kind of chomping up the yards and putting points on the board. So now the Pirates check out. They're checking into a different offensive set here. I've seen something the defense they like. Robinson, shifty, out of the backfield. Got maybe two yards before you swallowed up by that Vikings D-line. Did a great job of containment there. They're trying to rip at that ball. They're doing anything they can right now to try to create um, a turnover and create some momentum for themselves. Second down here for... Or excuse me, first down. No, it is second down here for Hampton. Francois steps through. Going to put it on himself here. The run up the middle to the 40. Wisely slides. It's going to be a late flag as his helmet came off as a Elizabeth City State defender got in his face. So attack on an extra 15. That's the thing that, that that young man has to think about now, taking the shot at his head. Uh, you get you take the risk of getting kicked out of the game and, and hurting yourself and your team. Uh, so was it really worth it? Uh, now, it'll be interesting to see how they judge it based on the fact that Francois was going into a slide. So maybe they may see he wasn't trying to target and they may just give him the penalty and rescind the ejection rule. So they're going to say it was a late hit and targeting. Which I think is the right call. He, he was definitely sliding to give himself up. So you got to ease up, especially on the quarterback. So. so the way it works in the Big South, the official, as you see, he's going to put the headset on. And he will talk to officials that are a secure room here in Armstrong Stadium who have the ability to look at replay. And the actual decision will come from those officials in the secure room. And after they make their determination, they will inform the head official down on the field. Um, and on that play, that was Desmond Mitchell, a uh, senior out of uh, Miami, Florida. I think he would know better as, as an upperclassman. But you know, with Francois comes some of that notoriety, people want to gonna want to take a shot at him and, um, and welcome him to HBCU and welcome to the Big South. So he has to be prepared for that. And, keep his composure um, yes. as those things happen. So again, uh, referee Nate Black is in discussion with the some of the officials there on the field as well as officials in the booth to discuss what they see on the replay. Again, Fran DeAndre Francois on a nice run away from pressure goes to slide and there was a late hit and the officials deemed it on the field as targeting now in this official review and here comes the word from black so the officials confirm the initial call on the field and greg williams number 12 I think he has it. So it was number 12, not number 15. Yeah, he said it was, he said 12. So as, if we go by that, that was the junior DB, uh, Greg Williams Jr. out of uh, Lewiston, North Carolina. So 
he is the one that is being escorted off the field. So we return to action. Fortunately, out of all of that, no one was hurt. It's going to be first and 10 for the Pirates after the pickup on the ground by Francois. Pass to the end zone was broken up. There's going to be a pass interference on that. The D DB reached out at the last second and grabbed him. Zell still almost made a, a, a remarkable catch on that play. Yeah, you heard the ooh and all from the crowd as Bell once again showed that amazing athleticism. So. Back-to-back -back penalties here against the Vikings. It was a 15-yard run for Francois, tackled it 15 yards after the penalty, and now pass interference continues to move the Pirates into the red zone. And if you're Elizabeth City State, you're going to go back, um, and when you watch this tape, and, and it's just the first quarter, you're really going to be disappointed in yourself because some of these plays were you kept the Pirates alive with penalties, uh, with, with mental mistakes. First down here, Bell flips it back on the reverse. Gonna cut up across the 10, knocked out of bounds. The ball carrier was Antonio Graham, the junior wide receiver. Did you see Francois on the block to get him around the quarter? Uh, that's what you wanna see. Now you really don't wanna see your quarterback out there um, throwing blocks, but you appreciate the toughness and the willingness to do what it takes to make a play happen. So gonna be second down and seven, ball on the nine. Pirates can get a new set of downs if they get it inside the two-yard line. Hand off to the tail back out of the backfield. Showed some speed there was Will Eason, but couldn't keep his balance along the sideline. He dove forward to pick up as many yards as possible. You like that extra effort, but I, we see a flag here on this near sideline. So an illegal formation penalty against the Pirates. I believe that's their first penalty against Hampton today. And I would say I would, if I was Elizabeth City, I might not have taken that penalty. I probably would have let it go to third down um, to try to get the, you know, to get a chance. Your defense actually has been playing good in this short field. And a lot of times offenses, they want more space in the red zone, so they have more, more of their playbook open to them to execute. They have more field to use instead of and those tight confines as you get closer to the end zone. So second down. So they heard you. So we're back. We're now to third down. Well, my coach hat still works from time to time. Yeah, I agree with you. You don't want to give Hampton a free play, basically, especially this close to your own end zone. Francois, three receivers bunched to his right. Single receiver, top of the formation. They go to that single receiver. Pass just maybe a half step too far in front of Paul, the junior out of Detroit, transfer from Cincinnati. Now you have a decision to make. Do you go for it here on fourth and five, or you uh, put your kick out there and trust him and get your three points? Looks like Coach Prunes has already made his mind up. Pirates look to go for it here, fourth and five. Again, the Pirates need to get to the Elizabeth City two-yard line or obviously into the end zone. And this is big for Elizabeth City. The Vikings, uh, if they can get a stop here, uh, who knows what it can mean for them and their confidence moving forward in this game. Francois takes it, looks right, comes over the middle, has the receiver, not going to be close. And the Vikings come away with a turnover on downs. You saw Francois take his time, was looking down, and eventually had to go to his check down. Unfortunately, not enough. So the first time today the Pirates offense comes off the field without putting points on the board. And we'll see what Elizabeth City State's offense can do here in the coffin corners of their own end of the field. And that's what I meant by that short field. There's not a lot of space. That crossing route normally would have got Hampton probably eight, nine yards after the catch. But because everything's so so condensed, uh, he didn't have much room to 
to um, to move in. But I would look for Elizabeth City to probably take a shot right here, being this backed up in their own uh, goal line. Smith. Play action. He's going to roll to his right. He's got a lot of room in front of him. Across the 15, to the 20, to the 30, to the 40, to the 50. All the way into Pirate territory before someone was even in his area code. And that run right there changes a lot of play calling here for Elizabeth City, to say the least. Well, you're mad at whoever you had on contain at the top of the screen. There's a little play action boot where they were trying to give him the option to run or throw, uh, but the end or the outside linebacker wasn't there to keep him in the pocket. Looks like Hampton may have been in some type of man-to-man -man coverage, but once he got to the past the line of scrimmage, uh, I thought he was going to go take it all away as there was no one in his way. Handoff to the tailback is going to pick up about a yard. The Pirate D-line right there. But again, we talked about momentum. Um, they were able to get that stop down in the red zone. Um, and now you can see that kind of building in a little bit of confidence here for the uh, Vikings. I think they may have think they feel like they found something in this two back set as well. Second and nine here for the Vikings. Smith under center. It's again the I formation. Handoff to the tailback. He's going to spin off one tackler across the 40 down to about the 38 yard line of Hampton. So. Third and short here for the Vikings, marching into Hampton territory, the best drive of the afternoon here for Elizabeth City State. Uh, great play call there, a little, a little delay action on the handoff, um, almost like some type of uh, Hampton Nation lead draw action where they were able to get the Pirates thinking pass, create some scenes inside. Uh, probably realizing man-to-man -man up front, Hampton has an advantage, trying to find a way to slow down those rushers. Smith under center. Play action. Looking down the field. Nearly intercepted. We got a late flag from the back official. I think they're going to get Valdez. They're going to say it was unnecessary. But in my opinion, Valdez doesn't know if that receiver makes that catch or not. That's, they're going to talk about it, which is one thing I think you see from happening with officials. Um, they're doing a great job of communicating with one another. Um, to make sure they get the call right. Great this, this job by the officials. I think to your point, T.O., a lot of times the officials now are being taught throw the flag first, then discuss, because worst case scenario, you pick it up, as opposed to you don't throw the flag, and then people are asking questions. Similar to what happened last year in the NFC Championship game with... <laughs> Uh, New Orleans and uh, Los Angeles. Rams. Everyone was just looking at someone to throw the flag, and no one threw the flag on obvious pass interference. But nonetheless, it brings up fourth down. T.O., as a coach, do you go for this year, or do you bring your special teams unit to try and get points? Well, I don't know if they have a, a kicker that can make it from this far, because uh, you will be looking at probably a 55, 56-yard field goal, um, especially given... Um, your your what you've seen from them kicking the ball already. I think you have nothing to lose. It's twenty to zero here in the first. Um, you've been kind of having some success. You want to keep that going. You take a chance here, and hopefully it works out for you. Smith under center, under pressure. He's going to roll. Pirates have containment. He's going to throw it way out of bounds, uncatchable, and it will result in a turnover on downs with twenty two seconds left here in this first quarter. So, there was positive there for Elizabeth City. Had their best play of the game, about a 40, almost 50-plus yard run there from the quarterback deep in your own territory. Unfortunately, the drive stalls right around the Pirates' 40. Well, I think uh, the thing you're looking for if you're Elizabeth City is you're looking for that consistency, and that's the thing they haven't been able to establish, that the consistency in the run game, um, consistency especially in stopping the run with the Pirates. Um, they've done it a little bit here on that last defensive series. Hopefully they can keep that going. But on offense, they got to get some consistency. First and 10 for Hampton. At their own 39, Francois looking left. Will let it go. Has Bell underneath. Bell unable to hold on to it. Falls out of bounds. Incomplete. And that was actually pretty good coverage. Had he caught it, I don't know how much, how much more he got after the catch as... 
number 13, Lawrence Brown was right there with him step for step. Uh, so the Pirates are doing some good things, but you can see some balls making it to the ground in the passing game. Uh, signs that there is a little bit they still need to improve upon. Francois in the shotgun goes left, has a receiver catch and yards after the catch there by number 85. That's Dana. Dana on the See where they mark him. I think he's got the first down and he does. That play should be the last here of the first quarter. And I believe you are right. That'll do it here in the first quarter. Pirates put 20 on Elizabeth City. We're going to take a media timeout. You're watching ESPN Plus. We'll be back. Back here on ESPN Plus, Matt White, Travis Oliver here from Armstrong Stadium on a muggy 77-degree evening here in Hampton. So far, the heat and humidity haven't really played an issue. Haven't seen too many cramps or anything here, TL. So good to see everyone took their hydration and uh, their water before the game. And here's Francois. It's going to be handed out to Sean McKenzie. He had about a 25-yard touchdown run on his last carry. This time, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Great job there by Vincent Thomas, squeezing down and uh, seeing the run play and able to take it out before McKenzie was able to get north and south and, and second a big run. Second down to 10, Pirates in the four receiver set. They're going to go quick outlet to the receiver, number two, Colette, Catlett, excuse me. Catlett going to be near the first down marker. See where they say he went out. They're going to give him about five yards on the carry, third and five into Elizabeth City territory. That's what that play is, just a quick run by the offense. And a quick run up the middle here for Will Robinson. He's got yardage and some all the way inside the 15-yard line. Pirates needed five and got that and some. Well, that's what we expect to see from those two backs, McKenzie and uh, Will Robinson. I uh, think they're going to be a dynamic one-two punch for the Pirates uh, as they take on this big south schedule um, in the inaugural season. The Pirates continue the high octane. Robinson. Robinson on the quick snap. This time he nets about three. On a day like today, T.O., talk about this constant drain and run on the defense, how this is just going to wear them down with their lack of depth. Well, what you're looking to do, uh, if, if you're a Hampton, you're just looking to keep lean on it. You know they don't have enough bodies um, or the amount of bodies just given that it's Division One versus Division Two to keep throwing at you. So you just want to keep leaning on them, leaning on them with the humidity, the heat. Uh, I guess the fortunate thing for Elizabeth City State is you're, where they're at is just as humid as it is here. So they're familiar with the surroundings uh, or dealing with the climate. Catlett in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Will Eason. He's going to pick up a handful of yards there. It's going to bring up third down. See what the Pirates do. They're knocking on the front door of the end zone. Under 13 minutes here, Pirates are going to need about, looks like about three, four yards if they want to get a new set of downs. But I will say the advance, advancements in how athletes train now, they understand their bodies a little bit better with the science involved. They're a lot more prepared to deal with, uh, deal with the humidity, deal with playing high reps, um, especially with the way the offense is played now. You know you're going to see 80 snaps a game on defense. Four receiver set. Two split out each side. We've got a back in the backfield. Now we got a timeout called by Hampton. Play clock was down to three. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. So we'll keep it right here. Reminder, next week we'll be right back here on ESPN+. Plus. Hampton will host fellow, another CIAA school, former conference foe in Virginia Union University. Bring him back here in the Armstrong Stadium. Kickoff set for 6 p.m. Matt White and Travis Oliver will be back here bringing you live Big South football. Quick look at stats here, T.O. Pirates right now, 19 rushing attempts, 201 yards on the ground, averaging almost just over 10 and a half yards per rush. Through the air, though, six receptions, just 37 yards, averaging just over six yards per catch. 
Well, they've been able to rip off some big runs. They hadn't really been able had the need for going through the air to really attack Elizabeth City. Uh, the Vikings, you know, been struggling with stopping the run game of the Pirates. Um, and, but then there's been some balls that the Pirates have let hit the ground as well. Pirates go back to the four receiver set. We got a whistle. Throw to the end zone. Went right to the receiver, unfortunately. Francois put a little bit too much on it. Uh, it looks like we have a flag there. I'm assuming it's probably going to be offsides on the defense. Or well, they got actually for a legal formation. So penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. Pirates, as you would expect. We'll go for it. Oh, no. They're going to get Lomax an opportunity. He's 2 for 3 today. Missed his first extra point. It looked like it was a bad snap on that first extra point. Since then, the last two looked pretty good for the sophomore. And he has a little bit of wind in his back. I think that's playing a part in it, too, that uh, maybe the reason why they're kicking instead of taking that chance early to go for it on fourth down. Got a delay game penalty charge to the Pirates. So the unit will back up another five yards. About a 34-yard attempt here for Lomax. Snap down. Kick is up. And the kick is good. So tag three on the board. Pirates on top here at home for the season opener. Score now 23-0 with 12-17 remaining here in this first half. And I think for the Pirates, this is what you want to see. You want to kind of see a complete um, ball game, being able to execute in all three phases. Uh, special teams has not been able to really get any chance to really show uh, just because of how well the Pirates have been playing offensively with getting touchdowns. And then defensively, on the punt return side, uh, you know, Elizabeth City not really being able to really kick it deep to get a chance to see some of the return game and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure the Pirates are excited about being able to get a chance to kick a field goal, uh, get a chance to execute that part of their uh, – of the game um, and now we'll see them again the kickoff coverage has been fantastic so far today looking at some of the stats so far today Shai McKenzie five carries 80 yards uh, DeAndre Francois three carries 55 yards uh, both of them with longs of 34 and 35, respectfully, respectively, uh, kind of show you what the Pirates been able to do on offense is uh, really, really just kind of lean on that uh, defensive front of the Vikings and break off some big runs. Ball is teed up on the Pirate 35-yard line. Lomax, another booming end over and kick. This one will go out the back of the end zone. So Elizabeth City State in the Offense will come back out on the field. And while we got this quick break, we'll look at the Sun Belt Reynolds out-of-town scoreboard around the conference. Troy and Campbell are in a delay in the second quarter. Troy on top 17-7. to seven. Just under 11 to go in the second quarter. Kennesaw State on top of Point University 35-0. In a final, Furman 46-13 to 13 over Charleston Southern. And kicking off in just, well, actually just kicking off, Monmouth and Western Michigan. That game you can see on ESPN3 uh, canceled because of the impending hurricane. Uh, our Presbyterian and Stetson. And in a, two finals from Thursday, Charlotte with the 49-28 victory over Gardner-Webb and North Alabama 26-17 over Western Illinois. North Alabama also beginning their maiden voyage here in the Big South along with the Pirates. Smith on the play action, under pressure, was able to get away from the defender, throws it away. Contact along the sideline, but the pass well out of bounds. 
and it will bring up second down. You already see some chippiness out there too with uh, on a couple of instances between both teams mm -hmm. as uh, this game is kind of getting out of hand a little bit on the scoreboard. Uh, but you don't want to do anything to hurt your team for the long term because if you do get kicked out of this game, you're gone for the rest of the game. In the second half, you get kicked out. You have to miss the first half of the next game. So, Yeah, great job by there. Some of the assistant coaches for the Pirates able to separate some of those players before anything escalated. So bring up second and 10. Ball on the Elizabeth City 25-yard line. Smith dropping back. Under pressure is going to stop and go down. A host of Pirates there make the sack. Leading the way was Marr and a few other D linemen. First sack of the game for the Pirates. And about this time, the, the Elizabeth City um, is in a position where they're going to be looking to have to throw the ball. And the Pirates, I think, kind of are, are feeling like they're having their way up front. As you've seen on the past couple of plays, they've been able to pressure um, Smith. Should be bringing up third down here. Third and long. Vikings need to get to their own 35-yard line. Smith in the shotgun. Four receivers set, and they're going to hand the ball off to the tailback. It's going to work along that weak side, trying to turn the corner, but couldn't get back to the original line of scrimmage before brought down by the Pirate D. These guys look confident out there as they're flying around. Uh, and this is how you want to look on the, on the opening day, on the, when you open up at home in front of your fans. Uh, you got alumni day here at Hampton. A lot of fans come back to, to check out the scene and see what's going on around campus and definitely coming to see how the team's going to look this year. Uh, they're definitely putting on a great show for the alumni right now. Yeah, 23-0, to zero, the score. Bell going to be just inside the 50-yard line. I believe that's Yarborough back again to punt. Snap, and we got whistles. False start against the Vikings. So they'll take the five-yard walk backwards and be set to kick again here from about their own 22. See if the Pirates look to bring pressure here. Yarborough's heels will be nipping at his own goal line. I think that's what caused the false start last time. They can see the Pirates are looking to set up for a block, not necessarily to return. But you get a little antsy. And this one's going to be a short punt. Bell will call for the fair catch just inside the Elizabeth City 40-yard line. And the Pirate offense will be coming back out onto the field. And we've got a timeout here. We'll be back. Pirates on top, 23-0. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Back here on ESPN Plus, Matt White, Travis T.O. Oliver here in Hampton. It is the kickoff of the 2019 season, 150 years of college football. T.O., that's a lot of, it's a lot of history. Ooh. A lot of great games over that 150 years. And the Pirates are trying to start off year 150 right. Snap to Francois, looks over the middle, got plenty of time, goes right, got a receiver. Makes the catch before going out of bounds. That was Graham, the junior wide receiver out of Portsmouth, Virginia. Just about a 20, 25 minute ride over the Monitor Merrimack over there at Churchland. The Truckers. <laughs> I know this. Jadakiss Bond wish he would have stayed on his first read. He came open late on the post, but great throw, great read by the quarterback. Saw the safety in the middle of the field, took the quick out. False start here on the Pirates. It's on number 70. Seven, that's Keldrick Wilson, a Richard Jr. Back to Pirates up five yards. First and 15 now. Ball out to the Viking 25-yard line. Pirates stick to the four-receiver set. One back spit on the backfield. That's McKenzie. Francois takes a shot to the end zone. Touchdown, Pirates. You called it right to Jadakus. Yeah, he had to get him back because he know he, he's going to look at tape and know he missed him on the post the first time, but that was a great catch.
catch by Jada Kiss and did an even better, great, a great, a better job of getting his feet down right there in the back of the end zone, just like they probably practiced it all count. The best thing about that, Bonds making the catch, rewarding his quarterback as uh, Francois took a shot there right at the end, but you saw the quarterback show that poise in the pocket under pressure, makes the throw, and the Pirates put another six on the board. 29-0 the score, nine and a half remaining here in the first half. That's what the great ones do. The great ones sit, sit in the pocket, know the hit shot is coming, but still taking that stand there to take the hit to make the throw. I um, mean, and Jada Kiss has to make that catch in those situations. The quarterback's not going to look throw you the ball to any more time. He's going to take shots. You're not going to come down with it. Extra point is good. 30-0 is our score. Pirates right now starting to show that passing game is alive and well, as we said in early on, T.O. Pirates had so much success on the ground, they really didn't have to flex the off the uh, the uh, muscle through the air, but a couple plays right there show you that DeAndre Francois has developed that type of relationship with some of his receivers. Well, I had a chance to see some of these guys this summer um, come out here and watch them work out out here on the field in that summer heat, and you can see them doing a lot of that, working on some timing routes, working on some routes along, along the sidelines, all those little things. And no coach was out here. Well, that was the great thing about it. The coaches can't be out there, so the players are taking it upon themselves to get better. Um, and that's what you want to see from these guys who are looking to make this leap here in the Big South um, and trying to climb the uh, ladder to that number one spot. Lomax has the ball teed up, ready to go. Pirates put 30 on the board here through a quarter and a half. See if Elizabeth City can respond, and they're going to return it from out, from inside the end zone, and that was a mistake as the defense was able to swallow the return man up before he got to the 10-yard line. Yeah, I don't think the return was sure what he should do because he kind of caught it going back into the end zone, so I don't think he wanted to get the, the safety, so he just felt it was better to bring it out. But against that kickoff coverage, I don't think that there is a good decision when you're talking about returning the ball. They've been uh, doing a great job all day. No, the better decision in that scenario is let it go. <laughs> but it will be first and 10 for the Vikings at their own 10-yard line. The last time they were pinned back this deep, Vikings were able to break a big run with Smith on the option. So let's see if the Pirates have learned from that mistake and can do a better job of containing uh, the young man, DeAndre Smith, the 6'3", 200-pound, quarterback out of Florida. Showing some athleticism here today, T.L. Well, I think uh, again, they feel really good with him at uh, quarterback position. They feel like their season has a chance to be a great one. He's got a man throw, though, off the mark. Tended receiver was John Anthony Snowden. The tight end out of D.C. Pass was just off the mark. Good job, though. Smith was being pressured by Marr, he was able to step up in the pocket, avoid the defender, try to make the throw on the run, just couldn't connect with his tight end. He's listed at 6'6", 275. Yeah, that's a big man. Big uh, man. <laughs> but I think... Uh, with Could you bring him down in your day? Oh, he goes down. Okay. He goes down. They all go down back in the day. They all go down. Now, today, I'm going to let him run. I'm stripping <laughs> the football. Playing smarter. <laughs> Yeah, look, that he run through me right now. <laughs> so I'm jumping on his back and holding on to everybody else get there. Snap, hand off to the tailback, and he's going to be gobbled up in the backfield. This defensive line for the Pirates continues to get the penetration and give the running backs of Elizabeth City State little to no room to work back there. I will say I've, what I've liked from Smith, given the circumstances, how they've been pressuring him. He's been poised. He hadn't really... Uh, cracked under the pressure. You hadn't seen him really get emotional or get upset at his lineman for the pressure. So I think for Elizabeth City, that's going to be great for them moving forward. Because I don't, I'm not sure they'll see a front as good as the Pirates moving forward this season. Uh, and for him to keep his composure and not really um, lose it out there is going to bode well for them down the stretch. Because they'll get better. Play action. Smith under pressure. Ball's loose. It's going to be a touchdown, I believe, for the Pirates. They're saying it is. The officials confirmed. So the strip sack results in a touchdown. 36-0. See if we can 
take a look at it here one more time. The Pirates were able to just continue to get back there. And it was almost, you almost jinxed it there, T.O. You said he hadn't really buckled under the pressure. But Smith just could not get away from the pressure, as we see it here. Just brought down in the end zone, lost the ball, and credit to the Pirates' D-line finding the loose ball and recovering it. Well, those guys up front, uh, those Pirates defensive linemen, those guys are coached by Marcus Dixon. Um, he has those guys flying around. They know their assignments. They're executing their assignments, getting to the football, um, and they're getting a hold of them. Uh, they're not letting them go. They're going to say it was an eight-yard eight loss. The fumble was forced by Matthews and recovered by Washington. So Pirates looking to add the extra point. Since Sturdivant missed that sack on the first uh, early in the game, they've been relentless at getting after this bill. Extra point up and good. 37-0, remaining. Again, the only blemish for Hampton today was the missed extra point on the first touchdown by Lomax. But since then, special teams has corrected that issue. And right now, in all three facets of the game, too, you got to think the Pirates are playing as well as you would like to see here, especially with it being week one. Exactly. Uh, looking at the schedule, too, it, uh, with Virginia Union coming up next, um, and then, of course, the big battle with Howard up in Chicago. For Hampton, uh, these games are going to be vital for really ironing out the kinks, uh, for really kind of getting getting everything rolling along for once they hit conference play. Once they hit conference play, they have a – non-conference against Liberty, but then they opened up with North Alabama, who we saw, spoke of earlier, had a really big win um, to open their season. It's, again, it's their inaugural season, inaugural season to the Big South. So you want to get all those kinks ironed out. You want to be able to kind of be hitting on all cylinders as you uh, get into that conference schedule. Yeah, we'll take another look here at the Sun Belt out-of-town scoreboard. Kennesaw State 42-0 to over point. 301 in the second quarter and underway Western Michigan with the early 7-0 lead over Monmouth as Elizabeth City State will get the ball just across their own 20 yard line on the return. Speaking of which, talking about uh, the Vikings of Elizabeth City, they'll have a chance to rebound as well uh, going against Allen um, next week at 1:30 kickoff. Um, and that'll be their home opener. So I'm sure they'll they'll look to bounce back. And uh, you'll hear a lot of coaches speak about the biggest change in their team is between the first and second game. And so when you're playing a game like this against a, an opponent like Hampton, who, who's been pretty dominant so far, but Elizabeth City has shown some flashes here, and they've made some plays, and they've done some good things, I think they'll have something to build on going into the uh, their conference schedule in the CIAA. And I know Coach Jones uh, will have these guys ready to compete. Uh, come conference time. Smith in the shotgun. He's alone in the backfield. He's going to be able to avoid the first two defenders. The first three. Again, the athleticism of Smith. He avoids another tackle before he's finally forced down just shy of the 30-yard line. About three, at least three guys had a good shot at bringing him down, but that elusive ability of Smith just too much and Elizabeth City, prior to that play, only with one first down, makes this second and two so crucial for the Vikings just to sustain a drive here as they've had 12 rushing attempts with, for only 56 yards. Elizabeth City State yet has yet to complete a pass, T.O. Well, that, that secondary is going to be a tough one to complete it against, but I think that what you saw there from Smith was they didn't, the Pirates weren't able to kind of close the pocket on him. They attacked him in, in kind of levels, and he was able to find creases in that. Smith under pressure, brought down from behind. Great job by the quarterback, though, to secure the ball as the Pirates went for the strip. That was Devin Thurman, the DN, another graduate student for this Pirate defense, stepping up and making a play. That senior leadership. And in this case, that grad leadership, you know, having a lot of guys, that says a lot, honestly, about the program, too, and what uh, Coach Prunty is about with these guys is having those guys actually come here and, and graduating and getting those degrees and getting that extra year of eligibility. 
uh, says a lot about what he's doing with this program and they're headed in the right direction. It's going to be third down, a third and three here for Elizabeth City, trying to convert just what would be their second first down here of the afternoon. Low snap. Smith just going to have to run for it. He's going to be near the first down marker. I think he just got it, and he did. So great decision there by Smith. You see his poise. He immediately tucked the ball once. He realized it was going to be a bad snap and was able to keep this drive going for Elizabeth City. Yeah, and that was just a little quarterback power where they pulled the, uh, they pulled the front side guard uh, they, or a little G play. They pulled the front side guard to get the quarterback downhill. Uh, Pirates didn't really adjust well to it. They had to find the crease. But the thing I was going to say, the smart thing he did that he didn't do early, he actually got down and – you don't want to take those big hits at um, if you're Smith because I know the Vikings are going to be counting on him a lot this year. Another low snap. Unfortunately, Smith not as fortunate to get away. Two Pirates there on the play. Anthony Jones and Mason King. Jones was the first contact, and King made sure to bring down Smith. Yeah, Pirates came with an A-gap uh, A blitz from the second level. Um, and I think that's what forced the low snap. The center saw it the last second, tried to adjust. Um, but you got to get one of them. You got to get the snap there. You got to pick up the, the blitzer. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't able to get either one and calls for a big loss here. And now it's going to put Elizabeth City in a place where you really don't want to be against the Pirates. And that's throwing the ball um, right now because this D-line is kind of – they're kind of humming right now, and that secondary has been playing really good. Right now it's marked third and 23. Another A-gap blitz and a, another fumble here. The ball's loose. Pirates couldn't get on the ball. Elizabeth City able to fall on it, but all the way back inside their own five-yard line. Well, that play was doomed from, from the beginning, and uh, luckily they recovered it. But that could have been an uh, intentional grounding there as well as he was trying to throw it just about when the ball comes out of his hand. Yeah, fortunately for Elizabeth City, it was ruled a fumble. And I believe that was number 11, Green, the senior wide receiver out of D.C., able to fall on the loose football. So it should be third and a country mile. Third and a country mile and a half, my friend. Ball is inside the Elizabeth City. Well, they're going to mark it at the six, but... Elizabeth City needs to get to their own 42. If I'm Elizabeth City, I run the ball to create some space to go ahead and punt it. You want to play it safe here. And they do just that. Pirates force the strip. It's loose. I think the Vikings again were able to fall on top of the loose football. You can see the linebackers have been trained when they make that initial contact to go for the strip. And Saunders was unable to hold on to it. But the defense again forces a punt situation for the Vikings here as we reach the three-minute mark here in the first half. Well, that's what happens when the defense, after you score, you kind of you get hungry. You want to be the next guy to score. Uh, you you want to get in the end zone. You don't want to be left out with that one guy to be left out by itself. So they, they're kind of seeing the blood in the water right now. So I believe Yarborough is going to be standing on the M in Hampton in the end zone. Pirates bring pressure. This punt won't even get to the 30. It's going to take a Hampton bounce to about the 21, 22 yard line. And wow. Pirates are going to be starting this drive in about their own red zone. But we'll be back after this media timeout. You're watching ESPN Plus. Welcome back to Hampton, Virginia. The sun is beginning to set. The lights are on here on a beginning to become a little bit more comfortable <laughs> Saturday evening. The humidity was prevalent earlier, but, you know, the nice coastal breeze coming through here in coastal Virginia. And so far, it's been a breeze here for Hampton, leading 37 to 0, two and a half minutes left. Pirates starting just outside of the Viking red zone here. 
Going to be a handoff to Sean McKenzie. He's already got one rushing touchdown. Breaks through one arm tackle before he's brought down from behind. Tackle made by number 33, Rodriguez. That was a good job by Rodriguez coming up from his cornerback position to uh, help stop the run. He met him in the hole. He didn't make the tackle, but he was able to, to slow the runner down and give the other defenders a chance to get there. Second down, same play. Francois hands off to McKenzie, and he runs out of real estate on this near sideline. And again, Rodriguez there again to kind of force him, force him flat, not let him get his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, get up field, and to slow him down yet again. Pirates need to get to about the 11. We'll be at about the 18 here on this play. It's about third and seven here. And I would look for Dana here 101 against, uh, against Rodriguez. It looked like they had single high coverage. Six seconds on the play clock. Francois is trying to get the play in. Three, two, and the Pirates will take the timeout to avoid the delay of game. It's going to be another 30-second timeout for Hampton. Looked to be some confusion on what the play call was going to be. Once again, it's the opening game for everybody, so still some wrinkles here and there to iron out for both teams. So while the Pirates have played pretty, pretty well, Still got to work on getting those plays in with 119 here left in the half, T.O. Yeah, I think that, that uh, again, early on, you're going to see a lot of those, just the uh, communication errors here and there, the checks and all that stuff, and different, different personnel groupings coming in. Uh, you hope to iron out those and, and be a lot more crisp as the game goes on and as the season goes on. Uh, but it looked like what happened there, they checked the play. When Francois saw the coverage, they changed it. So he was looking for another check, not really recognizing the play clock. So he has just got to get back in that groove and that rhythm of making the checks, knowing when you got to make it within the clock. So here they are, third and about five. Uh, looks like they got the, the play call, and I wouldn't be surprised if they go to Dana here one-on-one -on -one down at the bottom of the screen. Francois looks, gets it to him across the 10. Inside, down to the six, seven yard line. So Pirates pick up the first down and some, and you might know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, they had the one-on-one -on -one coverage in the corner, so press bail. So that's telling you right now, you're either gonna, he stays pressed, you're throwing the fade, he bails off, you're throwing the quick game. And speaking of a quick gain, Will Robinson, danger Will Robinson, touchdown Pirates. He just makes it look so easy. Did you get the Lost in Space reference? Remember the robot? <laughs> danger, 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 Will Robinson. No, dated, I understand, I'm old. But touchdown for Hampton, 43-0. Lomax out to attempt the extra point. Still 112 remaining here. I'll say this, looking out at this crowd, that there's a great turnout for this old CIAA rivalry. Uh, that hasn't really been played since 1995. I think the last time these two teams played one another. Yeah, for two schools in the same, you know, MDA, you know, same market, just a quick ride across the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel and across the border. But it's great to renew this rivalry. It's my understanding last night they had a battle of the bands between the two uh, institutions. So it's good just to renew that. And the Pirates will be doing the same thing next week when they welcome back Virginia Union. And the athletic director of Virginia Union is a name known to many Hampton fans, one Joe Taylor. Joe Taylor going into the College Football Hall of Fame in December. The announcement of his in oncoming induction was made last year, uh, right before the national championship game was played in uh, San Francisco. But he will actually be inducted in December. I believe the ceremony is going to be New York. So Joe Taylor, who is the all-time winningest football coach in Hampton history, uh, also had stops along the way at Virginia Union, Howard, FAMU, um, just one of the all-time greats and much-deserved uh, induction into the College Football Hall of Fame. Very much so. As a former player of his, um, actually, you know, lined up for him. He actually recruited me when I was coming out of high school. He showed up at my high school. Um, I have much respect 
uh, for the type of program he ran and how much he done for so many young men over the course of his career. No one that I know is more deserving than Coach Taylor of, of that honor of being inducted, and I, I look forward to that moment when he is. Oh, yes, yes. So, again, next week uh, we will have that game for you here on ESPN Plus as Hampton will play host to Virginia Union. And then week three, Hampton will head back to your hometown of Chicago playing the Bison of Howard game at Soldier Field. Another rivalry being renewed after this break was a little bit shorter. Just a year. Just a year. <laughs> But I know a lot of fans are looking forward to that, that battle. Smith under pressure again, eludes the defense before he's brought down. Viserian as well as number 53, Jones in on the tackle. But as you said, you know, the battle of the real HU, a debate that is now gone nationwide. It's been known to exist here in the greater mid-Atlantic region from Virginia up into the D.C. Maryland, area. Pennsylvania area where a lot of the alums of those two institutions are. But taking that on the road to, was it the second city? Is that what you guys call Chicago? Yeah, the the Midway? City. Soldier Field, home of the Bears. City of big shoulders. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I think the city will be very welcoming to that game and excited to have both of those programs up there. Uh, even though Howard took a crushing loss. I think last time I checked the score, it was 70. Eight. 73, 78 to zero. That was, or 70, 78, 79, that was the final. Yep, but a first down completion there for Elizabeth City as the final seconds we tick away here in the first half. Smith, it's going to be a handoff, and again, the Hampton D-line makes the stop, and that will wrap up the first half. Hampton puts 44 on the board after two. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Sunday Night Baseball, tonight on ESPN.
when Novak Djokovic takes the court on ESPN2. Give it up for sugar and sapphire elegance and majorettes. Here are the flyest dancers in the nation. Give it up for everyone. To our house guests, you can wear blue and white as much as you want, but it will never be half in blue and white. This must be a special day seeing your idol in person. As Dr. Harvey says, dream no small dream. The book is available in the Hampton Bookstore. It will be a good read on your way back to Halstead Street. We only want to see you smile again. Labor Day Flash Sale. The Marching Force appreciates all of the donations and support received as we prepare for our trip to Rome in the Macy's Day Parade. So we say thank you. We are close to reaching our goal. But we ask you to continue to donate. This band is going many, many places.
back here for the second half here at Armstrong Stadium. The sun has set, it's cooled off a bit. The return man here nearly makes another mistake. He started to run out, then try to take a step back into the end zone before he ultimately realized he had to return it. So the Vikings will be near their own 20 yard line here for the first drive here of the second half. When we take a look at some of the stats here from the first half, T.O. 14 first downs for Hampton, just three for the Vikings. 19 rushing attempts, 43 yards, 2.3 yards per carry. Only one reception for Elizabeth City for five yards. Pirates, 22 rushes, 214 yards on the ground, 9.7 yards per carry. Nine receptions, 91 receiving yards. Uh, nine of 16 is DeAndre Francois. Smith under center is going to be a handoff, and the D-line will gobble up the carrier. Saunders maybe two yards on the carry, if that. The biggest telling stat I see from the first half is as we look at it, it's the third down conversions. Uh, the Vikings were one of seven, the Pirates were six or eight. So what that's saying is the Pirates are finding a way to stay on the field in those situations where the Vikings are getting put off the field. The Pirates are doing a good job of not letting them convert and getting the ball back to their offense. The Vikings in the second half, they either want to make this, try to close the gap and make it respectable. They got to find a way to convert on third down. Second down and eight. Smith throws on the run. Incomplete pass intended for Bellamy. Bring up third down here. Smith under pressure. Stradivon and a couple other D linemen were Step for step with the quarterback. Credit Smith's athleticism and poise to get rid of it. And that was a big tale from the first half is that uh, they kept Smith uncomfortable. They tried their best to get him off his mark when he's throwing the ball um, and putting him in bad positions uh, where he was not able to uh, find the mark in the passing game. Man in motion is Bellamy. Smith under the center, takes the snap. Hand off to Saunders, or excuse me, that's a different tailback in. That's number five. That's Flint, I believe, in on the carry. Still going to come up a little bit short. And again, another third down where they were unable to convert. And now they'll be forced to punt it away. And this has not been good for the Vikings. They have not been able to punt the ball successfully. I think they've only averaged 20 yards per punt. They've only averaged 20 yards per punt, which has gave the Pirates a lot of short fields to work with. Yeah. Towards the end of the halftime intermission, you saw Yarborough working on some of his punts on that far sideline. Let's see what he can do here. Much better snap form, much better results. Going to come to about the 50, where the Pirates will have a return man. Nice move across the 40. Pick up of about 12 yards there for Catlett on the return. And you can see the Pirates starting to get some fresh faces out there um, in some of those positions. And he actually had one that was finally returnable and was able to get a couple yards before eventually being brought down again in Viking territory on the plus side of the field for the Pirates. Pirates are going to be starting at the 37-yard line of ECSU. We'll see if Francois is still in at quarterback, and he is. It looks like the entire first team offense will return here to start the second half for Hampton. Pirates, other than one turnover on downs deep in Elizabeth City State territory, pretty much perfect there in the first half, T.O. Yeah, they've been able to run the ball on, on command. The big thing I look for is what you see right here, the passing game. Miscommunication there between the quarterback and the receiver. It was intended for Dana. Dana ran a simple go route and was streaking down the sideline. Looked like Francois was looking for that comeback or a curl route. And Dana still had his head down and was racing down the sideline. Well, what he saw was they read their option in the cornerback. If the cornerback sits flat, he's going to run the go route. If he bails out of that, he's going to run a hitch. The cornerback set, so Dana went vertical. Uh, Francois didn't see it till late. And what I do see is Shea McKenzie outrunning the entire Elizabeth City State defense to the end zone from 40, about 43 yards out. 
Shane McK oh, excuse me, from 37 yards out, Shane McKenzie turned on the burners. And that just put him over 100 yards to open the season. Um, that's a good way to start the season for that young man. Great way to start it for the Pirates. Um, I, I wonder what this season, if he can stay healthy throughout the season, what this season can be for him and what it can be for the Pirates because he's a, a young man with a ton of potential as we see it here. Um, he's a guy that can run through tackles. He can run by tacklers. Uh, and that's a tough load for most defenses to deal with. Extra point from Lomax is up and good. 51-0 is our score here at Armstrong Stadium. And the Pirates begin the second half in a similar manner to how they began the first half with a touchdown. It was a rushing attack. And the Pirates now on the ground north of 250 yards. And so now the question becomes for Prunty, Coach Prunty is, uh, when do you start getting some of your uh, second and third string guys in there? Uh, the last thing you want to do is get an injury that really changes the outcome of your season, you know. So, and I don't want to speak that on any of these young guys. I hope they all walk off the field healthy. Um, but that's a reality that you have to be prepared for. So, um, and then getting some experience with some of those young guys in game situations is key here in a game like this where they can kind of get those first game jitters out of the way. Yep, DeAndre Francois leading another scoring drive. Pirates, special teams out for the kick. Lomax, another booming kick, will carry into the end zone. Return man across the 5 to the 10, 15, knocked at the 20. That's Yarborough. We'll see if they mark him near the 21-yard line, and that's where the official goes to. So a good return for Elizabeth City as they will begin with their second drive here of the second half. And Yarbrough's a utility man. If you look at him, he's everywhere on the field. He's the punter, kick returner, wide receiver. And we got a timeout here, so we'll take a quick break. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. And we're back at Armstrong Stadium, ESPN+, Plus, uh, with the Big South Conference. Hampton taking on Elizabeth City State. Here in the third quarter, 12.54 left to go. The Pirates up 51-0 as the Vikings take the field. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. Bellamy goes in motion. It's going to be a handoff. I believe that's Saunders, and he took a hit right at the waist. Fortunately for ECU, he was able to hold on to it, and that was Flint on the carry. And you see the Pirates on defense have sub, put in some substitutions. Um, as you're seeing, again, we talked about it early, starting to get some of those other guys out there, to some of your young players and your backups to get them some game reps. So talk a little bit about that, T.O., as a coach, uh, when you're putting in some of these guys, giving them some live action against somebody not in your own jersey. You know, after practice, you play each other so, lo so long. How beneficial is it to finally get game action? Well, I'll tell you, I, I remember my first time, um, it was against Howard University in the Giant Stadium, in um, the old Giant Stadium. And the butterflies that were sitting in my stomach, actually when I actually took the defensive rep was, I couldn't describe it. I can't even describe how I felt. But after getting that first play and that first contact, Brandon, it was like, okay, this is normal again. So now you get a chance to, as a coach, you get a chance to evaluate these players in actual live Brandon, game action, see how they're gonna respond. Uh, see who's going to work through the nerves, who's going to make what type of mistakes, and who you, who becomes more uh, reliable in those situations. So for the players, it's valuable experience because there are some things you just can't simulate in practice, and one of those things is that live action of a game, that live feel. Flint will get credited for a one-yard rush. It's going to be a pitch to the right. I think that Saunders back in. He'll be shy of the 30. The Vikings needed to get to their own 31. That'll bring up fourth down. And again, another third down that they do not convert. Was again, we're going to lead to another punt in the Pirates, possibly yes, taking over on the short field. The so one drive down for the second unit. Same results here for Hampton. Clock continues to tick away here under 11 minutes. Special teams back on the field for both teams. Yarborough. That'd be a good time to make some noise. And the thing you look at there is, is, is if you, and makes you kind of uh, feel good about everything is the Pirates had their second unit out there, and they were still able to go three and out. Yarborough sitting on its own 12. Nice snap. 
Punt is away. It's going to be wobbly. It is returnable, but a fair catch made by Bell. So you see Coach Prunchy still trying to get Bell a little action at the return game. Well, another thing that happens in this type of situation, that ball looks a lot different when you're looking up in those lights. Earlier in the game, you still had that daylight sun. That's one type of way you have to kind of find the ball. But when those lights come on, it's easy to see. You see a lot of players lose it in the lights. You even see it in baseball on those long, deep flies to the outfield. So as many reps as you can get a player at tracking that ball in the light can make a big difference. Pirates offense comes out onto the field. It looks like we've got some subs here on offense. In at QB, it looks like Austin Bradley, another graduate student transfer. In at quarterback, he's going to get rid of it. Was going to Bond, streaking up the left sidelines. He was in double coverage. And Bradley took a shot there in the pocket. And again, another situation where you're getting your backup quarterback some game reps. Um, so he stays sharp, stays ready. Um, and again, you know how he's going to respond in the game situation. And he stood in there, delivered a pretty decent ball, um, despite the, uh, the hit that he took to get rid of it. It's going to be a handoff. I believe that's Robinson still in. Pick of about two yards. Brings up third down. So I think it's safe to say the... Pirate debut for DeAndre Francois has come to an end, and so far I think I would give him A's across the board. And now we begin to see, as you said, Tio, the second string begin to slowly be inserted into this game and see what Coach Prunty has as backups and potentially some future players down the line for his team. Well, that's definitely been a success for him. You talk about 51 points in your, in your season opener. Uh, first time under center here in, in the Pirate uniform. Uh, Pirates are going to make an adjustment here at the line. Four seconds on the play clock. Pirates don't get it off, and we're going to have a delay of, game, delay of game or a false start. Take your pick. Well, that was that's the stuff you want to see with these units. You want to get them that, that those live reps so they can get used to managing under that, that actual game clock. There's some things like you could try to simulate as best as possible in practice, but you only get that real feel when you hit the actual field against an actual opponent. So it's going to bring up third and long. We've got whistles. I think we're okay. Bella or Bradley, excuse me, under center. I mean, in the shotgun. He's looking right. Has time. He's going to let it go. Has a receiver. Going to be just at the marker. Catch was made by Dana. Let's see where they spot him. He's going to be right at that marker. I think they're going to say he's a yard short. I think that was might not have been a very good spot by that fish. I think as he went down, he was able to get the ball at least to the 45, but Pirates still going to go for it here and try to convert it. Another, like you said, another opportunity for this unit or some of these individuals to get in and try and convert a fourth down here. As you said, something you just can't simulate to the same level of intensity in practice. Well, even from the coaching staff, it's a great opportunity to kind of work on these situations, How already having a decision made so you get substitutions in on, on time and you're able to um, not have to waste time outs on this stuff. But Eason is going to get brought down right at the line. I think he's got enough to get in. The officials say he does. So the line judge says move the chains, and the Pirates drive stays alive here, 8-14 and counting. And Eason the keeps the drive and the clock running here for the Pirates, picking up a first down on fourth and one. A great job of just getting square and getting what you need. Um, sometimes that's what all you that's what you got to do is just put your head down. It's not about the, the glory of getting a big run or breaking the 40, 50 yard run, just the three yards in the cloud of dust just to keep those chains going, chains alive. Eight seconds on the play clock here for the Pirates. Bradley calls out the set. He's going to hand it off to Eason again. Or excuse me, that's number 28 in at tail back. That's Ike Onuka. And 
And what you see here is the uh, with this backup unit, they're not getting as much push up front as they once were. Uh, and that's creating those lanes, not being there like they were in the first unit. But again, it's always this is always good teaching tape, good um, experience for these young guys to get out there and you know and and hopefully improve it. These are going to be the guys that are going to step into these spots in the years to come. So, on Wuka, redshirt freshman out of Gainesville, Virginia, high snap. Bradley picks it up, throws it to no one. See if he was out of the pocket. I think he was. You know, Bradley, you know, sometimes you can speak to it better than I can to you. They tell you when you're a quarterback, just fall on it. That time, Bradley able to get out of the box and just throw it away and preserve a, a decent third and nine here as opposed to what could have easily been third and, what'd you say, a country mile? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a smart play by him. He saw he could be able to pick the ball up, and he knew he wasn't going to get anything out of it, just getting the ball out of bounds, throwing it away, and and saving a potentially dangerous situation. That's that grad student, that senior leadership that you look for out of that, especially out of position of quarterback. Much better snap. Pass is completed. I believe that's Dana. He breaks an arm tackle, still on his feet, brought down inside the 10 yard line. And that's what you're talking about. What could have been third and Lord knows what. He's able to convert. He stands in the pocket. I believe he took a shot as that safety on the backside was coming in on him, but makes a beautiful pass. Dana rewards him, breaks two tackles, and you've got first and goal here for Hampton. Well, that was two couple things you saw in that play with the quarterback showing the poise to stand in the pocket and take the shot and deliver a catchable ball. And then Dana is kind of emerging today as a, as a threat for the Pirates. He's made some big catches, some big plays today. Another high snap, but Bradley able to control it. And the Pirates are going to go quick here, try to catch on the Vikings off guard. And there he goes. He plows ahead downhill for another score for the Pirates. And that'll make it 57 to 0 with the kick coming. On the carry there, we had Darren Butts, the red shirt freshman again out of Suffolk, Virginia. Uh, right there across the uh, Monona Merrimack Bridge Tunnel um, over here again. Pirates have done a great job of locally snatching up some gems and having some of those guys from right here in the Tidewater area make a huge impact on this football team. Yeah, big play there. Extra point here on the way. Snap down, it was a little high, but a good job to control it. The kick is up and the kick is good. Nice drive there for the Pirates. Not only do they come up with the score, but they're able to kill a lot of the clock here as we're under six minutes remaining here in the quarter. Pirates were able to convert several third downs on that drive. The bigger ones coming on the, after the throwaway on second down. Um, Bradley standing in the pocket and delivering a great pass to uh, to Dana, which ended up turning, keeping that drive going, which then led to that score of the Pirates. Uh, right now hitting on all cylinders with all of the groups they're putting on the field. Uh, so, again, they're still going to promise you when the coaches watch the film, though, you would think out of the 58-0 that you're going to go in the film session, coach is going to be overjoyed. They're still going to chew them out because I'm sure they're going to see some stuff, some missed assignments here or there. Uh, where there's going to be room for improvement. And that's what you want. You don't want your guys to get complacent. You don't want them to get like feel like they've reached um, the top already. You want to keep them going. And again, that if the biggest improvement is between the first and second game, just imagine what you can see next week from the Pirates. Lomax tees the ball up at the Pirate 35-yard line. His last few kickoffs have been into the end zone. Let's see if he keeps that going. And this one's going to be just shy of the five yard line, but a nice return here for Elizabeth City. Across the 40 to the 50, down to the 30, 20, 10, five touchdown Vikings. The return all the way back from Zion Riddick, a 95 yarder gets the Vikings on the board. And I think that's the play that the that the Vikings have been looking for all day. 
Um, a great job by the return man of finding the seam in there and then just using his wheels to kind of uh, to kind of take off away from the rest of the kickoff cover team. And that's been a great a shining part of the Pirates special team is their kickoff team have been do doing such a great job. But a great job by that young man to find the end zone and get his team on the board. Extra point forthcoming. I tell you this much too, as a as a defensive guy, that always frustrated you when you were pitching the shutout, and somehow they score, they get on the board, and you had nothing to do with it being on the field. Special teams or the offense turns the ball over, uh, that always kind of drove you crazy. And with that, we're going to take a quick media timeout. We'll be right back, 58 to seven. You're watching ESPN Plus. And welcome back to Armstrong Stadium here in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, ESPN Plus Big South broadcast of Hampton University Pirates versus the Elizabeth City State Vikings. Uh, Elizabeth City set to kick off here in the third quarter with 5.30 remaining to play after a 90-plus yard return by the Vikings to finally get them on the board. Um, interesting to see how the Vikings now try to attack the rest of this game um, as I'm pretty sure they probably feel like they have a lot of ground to make up for the win, but I'm sure they want to make this score a little closer than what the scoreboard shows at this moment. So, And the kick is underway, and the Pirates will have a chance to return this one. And as we're starting to see some sloppy play the past couple of possessions from the Pirates special teams, uh, this is one of the things you have to learn how to deal with as well in these situations is how do you handle success? When you get up big, can you, as my coach used to say, can you kill an ant with a sledgehammer? Or, or do you start to get lax and start to make mistakes and start to lose focus? And working hard to become successful is one thing. Working hard to stay successful is a whole nother. And that's where the Pirates are at right now, keeping that focus, staying, staying sharp despite Give you a quick update of the Sun Belt out of town scores. In the fourth quarter, Kennesaw State 56-0 over point. Western Michigan 31-7 over Monmouth. That's in the second quarter. And short pickup there on the run. Again, Pirates take the field with uh, putting a few more backups out there. As you see on the offensive line, they subbed in a few more guys as well, uh, trying to get those guys some reps um, and see what we got. And you can see they're trying to go a little bit more with the ground game to kind of, excuse me, to kind of uh, get that part of it going and, and try to run out this clock as well. I know the Pirates. Nobody wants to be that team that runs the score up on an, on an opponent, so they want to try to shorten this game as well as possible. Bradley corrals the high snap. He's going to keep it. Nowhere to go in the defense. Wraps him up. Tackle for loss by Dobson. The redshirt freshman D. Lyman out of North Carolina makes the play. And they looked like they were kind of ready for that. The end did a good job of setting the corner and not letting Bradley get outside. Let that pursuit from the inside chase him down and make a big play there. That'll bring up third down. Third and long. Pirates need to get to about their own 30, what, 7, 36-yard line to uh, keep this drive going. Pirates, three receivers. Bradley going to take a shot deep. Pass well defended. Think that was number 29 in coverage. Booker. Pass was intended for Johnson. Bring up fourth down and what I believe is the first punt. It's the first punt. Um, and that last coverage, the uh, Vikings, I guess, after being beat a couple times on those stick routes, that's what we call it, running to the stick and stop. So 
uh, Vikings kind of setting like a two-man under coverage where the corners were playing for that route. So the corner actually ran the route better than the receiver um, and did a great job of breaking it up there. So Pirates will be punting from inside their own 10. High snap, able to control it. Nice end over end punt will come down to about the 40. And the return man Yarborough, not only does he punt, he returns punts. Calls for the fair catch at the 40-yard line of the Vikings. We'll call him the utility man. You just plug him in wherever you need him. That young man's going to be out there to make a play. That young man has definitely earned his scholarship here tonight. 3.33 remaining here in the third quarter. If you believe in signs, play 4-3 tonight on the lotto. 3-3-3-3. As the Pirates come out with the defensive unit, pretty successful in their first trip. See what they do here. Looks like we got a change in quarterback here for Elizabeth City. Patterson will check in. Man in motion. Throw to the flat is complete. Nice pickup and spin out of an arm tackle there for Joyner. That was the man in motion, went from the right of the formation to the left. Quick pitch to him in the flats, and he's able to turn up field with it, uh, T.L. Yeah, they just, that, that play right there is nothing but a, a run. It's a pass play, but it's a running play designed to get about four or five yards. Because uh, the Pirates have been doing a great job with actually um, stopping the run on the inside. So that's a way to kind of get you in second and manageable. When we look at it, this is the best field position um, that the Vikings have really started with all day. Quarterback under center, handoff to the tailback. He's brought down out Saunders. He got back to the line of scrimmage. And this is where they struggle. Again, they try to run the ball inside. Um, and that pirate defense on the interior, that defensive line isn't having any of that. And this has been the Achilles heel of the, the Vikings is trying to run the ball on third down or excuse 50. me, or convert on third down. 55 rushing yards for the Vikings. And as you said, just have been unable to convert third downs, one of nine. And fourth down, 0 of one on conversions. So this is going to be about third and five here. Man in motion is Yarborough. They pump fake. They're looking to his side. The quarterback throws a nice ball up for him. He makes, he doesn't hold on to it, but I don't think he was going to be in bounds even if he did. So that'll bring up fourth down. And on that play, great coverage by Chisley. He was right there step for step with him. Uh, Yarborough went up to make a great catch, but Chisley did a good job of pushing him to the to the white on the sideline. Like I said, he come down with he'd still been out of bounds. Yeah. Not a bad series for Patterson. Two nice, two nice balls. That one just couldn't stay in bounds for him. So Yarborough will. Stay on the field and resume his role that we've called his name the most for tonight, and that's as punter. And the Pirates, you can see they're kind of setting up in the more of a safe uh, punt return, thinking they may try to fake it here. Yarborough gets away probably his best punt. It'll go out of bounds about the 40-yard line. Yard line. And they're going to mark it at the 35. First and 10 for Hampton. You assume Austin Bradley will come back out on the field with 148 here in the third quarter. We'll see if Coach Prunty sticks with Bradley or maybe brings in Isaiah Robinson, the Richard sophomore transfer from Maine. Well, that's the one great thing here uh, with the Pirates. They do have a few different guys they can call on at the helm to kind of run the show. And they all are guys with experience. One other name it could be is Bruce Dixon the fourth. We saw him get some playing time last year. Actually, I think he only attempted one pass for the year and completed it for a touchdown, so. <laughs> Pirates offense on the field. Under center is still Bradley, nearly an interception. That was a great job by the cornerback, though, reading um, the rollout by the quarterback. They tried to run a high-low combination on him. He stayed on the, the uh, 
the hitch for a little while, but read the quarterback going vertical, did a good job sinking, knocking it away. Pass that was intended for Antonio Graham brings up second down. One forty-eight, or excuse me, one forty-three on the game clock here as we come to the end of this third quarter, where we've seen two touchdowns, one for each team. Yeah, after the high-scoring first half by the Pirates, it's kind of slowed down as they've gotten more into the running game. Nice move there by the tailback. Eason continues to move the Pirates towards the end zone, crossing the 40-yard line, brought down at the Pirate 42. So that'll be third and about four here. And the Pirates have had a lot of success here on third down. They didn't convert the last time out, but that was the the one of the first ones they hadn't converted on. And they're going to take their time. They hadn't been huddling all day, but looks like they're taking their time to make sure they get the right play call in. But Bradley's going to have to hustle the guys to the line here as we're ticking down right at 10 seconds on the game clock, on the play clock. Third down, high snap. Bradley controls it, gets it to Cortez. Cortez makes the first defender miss. Looks like he's able to keep his balance and get the first down. Cortez Lewis, the redshirt senior transfer from Wake Forest, makes an impact there, keeps the drive alive. Clock continues to tick here as he stayed in bounds. You see the um, looking at the Vikings defense as well. They made some substitutions out there as well to get some of their um, younger and their, their second tier guys out there, which again, this is going to be beneficial to those guys. They're going to see some pretty strong competition as the Pirates look like they're going to let this clock tick to the quarter. I was just going to say, I think that will do it here for this third quarter. Pirates driving. They'll have first and 10 at their own 48. When we come back, you're watching ESPN Plus. That's the end of Holland was unprecedented. We didn't want them to die, and we didn't want to die ourselves. We are back here in Hampton, Virginia, Armstrong Stadium. Pirates 58, Vikings 7. Pirates will start here on first and 10 at their own 48-yard line. Going to be a handoff to the tailback. Nice cut up the middle. He's got room to work first down and then a little bit more. Right down near the 40-yard line was number 28, Onukwa. The Pirates look like they're content to try to run the ball here and, and really eat away at some of this clock, get out of here with the win. Pirates get the first down on that run by the retro freshman into... Viking territory. Clock continues to tick here. Pirates have this one well in hand. Looking ahead to their matchup next week against the Panthers of Virginia Union. Bradley takes a shot down the field. He's got a receiver. And he can't hold on to it. Believe that was Williams. Cortez Williams was wide open. A beautifully thrown football. Cortez just couldn't hold on to it. A few more seconds to secure the score. I think he might have got a little excited knowing that when he hauled that ball in, he was ready to celebrate. Got a little bit ahead of himself. Great pass by Bradley. Put it right there on him. Just a little bit too hot, I guess, for uh, Cortez to kind of pull that in. Now the Pirates second and 10. I believe they'll get back to the ground game, try to make it sec third and manageable here. And they're going to hand it off across the 40. Down maybe to the 43-yard line. That was, I believe, Rashad, Rashad Harriet on the carry. Saw a little bit of him last year towards the tail end of the season for Coach Prunty and these Pirates. And he showed to be himself to be a good option for him last year. Um, and I'm sure that experience is definitely paying dividends for him now moving forward. I know primarily a special teamer, uh, but he made some impacts last year with running the ball, especially with the injuries, uh, with the injuries to 
Shy McKenzie last year. Brings up third down. Pirates need to get to the Viking 28, I believe. It's going to be a keeper for Bradley. Breaks one tackle. It's going to be brought down, I think, a yard shy of the first down marker. Out here, I'm sure in this situation, I wouldn't suspect the Pirates to go for it here. Try to stay on the field and keep the clock going. Even here, it might look like the Pirates may take a timeout as they discuss what they want to do here on the play. They Going to let the clock tick down to one second to try to get as much time off the game clock as possible. And the Pirates will start walking to the sideline as the play clock hits one. They call the 30-second timeout. And that's the safe call here. You get a chance as a head coach to think over what you want to do if you want to kick it or if you want to, if you want to kick it or you want to you want to go for it here um, and then if you're going to go for it what is the right call what's the good play here um, to call in this situation both teams in their huddle right now as you say pirates take an opportunity to think about it here fourth and they're going to say three Pirates offense, as we expected, stays on the field. Bradley lines up in the shotgun. One back split out to his left. He's got a couple of tight ends to his right. Takes a snap, looks to go to the air, has Cortez one-on-one. -on -one. This time, Bradley underthrows it. And that is just the game of football. Bradley throws a perfect ball. Cortez can't hold on to it. This time Cortez gets the advantage of the DB and Bradley underthrows it. And a uh, pass deflection there for the Vikings forces the turnover on downs. And that's what happens that earlier play. You go back to the earlier play when he put it out there, Cortez doesn't come down with the ball. So now he tries to be safer with the ball and throw some, I guess, a jump ball or catchable ball and just doesn't put enough on it where the defensive back was able to kind of knock it away. And he was face guarding, but in college, there's no rule against face guarding. As long as he doesn't make contact, it's good coverage. So great job by the cornerback uh, being in position to knock the ball away. Low snap here for the Vikings, and the tailback is swallowed up. Tackle made by number 69, Justin Lawson, the DN Richard sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina, a transfer from ECU, making a play there for the Spires D-line. Got into the backfield and swallowed up Flint. Loss of a couple yards on that play. And this second unit is, has been playing to the level that's been expected by this Pirate defense all day. As, since they've taken the field, they haven't given the Vikings any room to do anything offensively either. Quick pitch to the outside is incomplete Patterson on that bootleg had a receiver I believe he was trying to get it to number 80 Davis who just couldn't hold on to it brings up third and 14 now Vikings trying to avoid another quick three and out but the defense of the Pirates not letting up here as the second unit has come into you again they just uh, they've been hitting on all cylinders defense, but that was a staple of the Pirates last year. If you look at if you looked at their games last year defensively, they were a sound unit. They were probably the strength of the team. The offense did a lot of great things, but that defense, especially that front last year with that experience in the secondary, were really good. Vikings stick to the running game here. Not much room to work with. Brings up. Fourth down. Saunders on the carry. Well, the unit comes onto the field and. Fourth down. Yarborough will head back to punt again. 
I tell you what, when he we probably decided to come to Elizabeth City, I knew he, he probably agreed to punt, but I hope I know he hoped he wouldn't be doing this much punting. As he's got his lion's share of work today. Under 11 minutes to go here. Yarborough receives a nice snap. Looks to angle it to the sideline where Bell will return across the 50. And he's going to be wrapped up out of bounds. Return of maybe three yards, if that, for Bell. He almost looks excited when he caught the ball. He finally had something he thought he could use. But a good job by the Vikings coverage unit to get down there and not give up a big play. Yeah, but if you're the Pirates, again, you're looking at a short field position. Same thing with the Vikings. You keep putting your defenses in these binds. That's definitely a part of the game. If I'm the Vikings, when you get back to Elizabeth City, you're going to work on. You're going to get this punting game together because uh, you don't want to punt, but if you do have to, you want it to be able to flip the field and, and make teams have to work to move the ball down the field on you. Let's hear it one more time for your Hampton University marching force. And I'm hoping that uh, just checking out the roster, I believe that maybe Yarborough is, is an emergency punter because they have someone else listed, Jimmy Chambers, who we've not seen today, who's supposed to take over, have the punting duties for the... Will the he sit on the ground, pick up about three... Pirates content to keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock running here in this fourth quarter ahead by 51 points. And I, I feel like the Pirates are probably a little content. They may take a shot or two like they've shown to this point. But I think they're content just to go ahead and run this clock out. As you see them line up in more of the uh, bigger packages with the two tight ends, the tight end and the fullback sets, just trying to run this clock out. Play clock gets down to one. Pirates snap. Eason dancing around the defensive line. He's so small and elusive. He actually just got two Vikings to dive into each other, trying to tackle him. Pick up a, maybe a yard, though, after all that effort. Give you some more Sun Belt rentals, out of town scores. Troy and Campbell, after what seemed like a world's longest delay, have returned to the field. 20 to 7, Troy leads over Campbell. Kennesaw State, 59 0 over Point University. That's with five and a half minutes left. At halftime, Western Michigan leads Monmouth 31 to 7. And as we reported earlier, Furman 46 to 13 over Charleston Southern. Presbyterian and Stetson canceled due to the Weather down in the uh, southeast region of the United States, North Alabama over Western Illinois, and Charlotte over Gardner-Webb in earlier action this week. Bradley's going to take a shot. He's got a man wide open, makes the catch, absorbs the contact, spins all the way down to about the one-yard line. What an impressive display by Lorenzo Thompson. Not just the catch, but he took a big hit after he made that catch and kept his balance. It looked like he was going to go down after the, the underthrow a little bit. I think even Thompson was surprised how open he was in the middle of the field. Uh, but he did a great job of breaking the first tackle and almost fought through that last big shot to get on in there for the end zone. And Bradley will keep it and run it in, give it to the official in the back of the end zone and the Pirates. You said they were going to potentially take a shot deep. Well, T.O., <laughs> it's about as deep as it gets down to the one-yard line. 64-7, Hampton over the Vikings. Extra point on the way. Lomax will come back in. Lomax in to attempt the point after. So if I'm the Pirates, my takeaway from the day as I look at this game, the only thing I see the Pirates wanting to do moving forward is become more efficient in the passing game. Uh, through the third quarter, we look at the passing they were uh, 12 for 24, 50%. You don't want, you want to be completing passes 65 to 70% in this age of football. So the Pirates will look to try to become more efficient in the passing game moving forward. 
If you're, the, if you're the Vikings, your takeaway right now is you played a, a, a superior opponent. And they came out and competed for the most part. Uh, I think you have to find a way to establish the run. Uh, that's what kind of hurt them so far. They weren't able to get those, get out of those first, those second and long, third and long situations. You want to get better on third down. Converting third down is going to be key for them moving forward. Defensively, uh, stopping the run. Um, those athletic quarterbacks. This isn't going to be the last athletic, athletic quarterback they see, so they're going to have to find a way to keep them in the pocket um, and not let them exploit them with his legs. A stoop point there by T.O. 65-7, to seven, our score. A reminder, here on ESPN, we'll be bringing you what some consider real football on Monday. The Hampton Lady Pirates will play host of the United States Naval Academy here on Labor Day. The opening pitch, I believe it's what it's called in soccer, will be set for four. We'll have it for you right here on ESPN+. Plus. I'll try my best to make it out there and support those ladies. The ladies worked hard all summer to get ready for this point. So alumni, fans, let's get on out there and support those ladies as they take the field against the U.S. Naval Academy. Lomax, end over end kick. Last one got returned for a touchdown. Let's see if the coverage team has made the necessary adjustments. Good moves there, but he is wrapped up inside the 20-yard line. I can guarantee you they probably put a couple couple of the starters on the kickoff team back out there to make sure whatever happened the last time didn't happen again. Yeah, they didn't want to give Riddick the opportunity of a repeat performance. But now we've got a media timeout. We'll be back. 8.03 left here, 65-7 to 7 our score. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to this ESPN Plus presentation of the Big South Football Conference, Hampton University Pirates versus the Elizabeth, State, Elizabeth City State Vikings here in Hampton, Virginia. We're in the third quarter, 803. Uh, pass out to the receiver on the side, and Pirates with a quick takedown of the receiver. That's going to keep them in second and long. Here with 750 to go in the fourth quarter. Pirates have dominated this game from start to now as they have just kind of had their way with the Vikings offensively and defensively. But the Vikings did find a way to get on the board with the long kickoff return there in the, um, in the third, qu uh, third quarter to yeah. kind of... Uh, Riddick was able to take it almost 95 yards back to the house for, as you said, T.O., the lone score for the Vikings. 65-7 to seven is where we are. Just under seven and a half minutes left in the game. Patterson... Fakes the throw, oh, excuse me, fake the handoff, but again, the pressure coming from that front four of the Pirates forces him to throw it away. At least he had a receiver in the neighborhood, so it's not an intentional grounding situation. But just like that, it's third down. And this has been there, again, I said it earlier, this has been their Achilles heel. They've been in third down, not able to convert. They've been in third down the whole game. Pretty much. I think they've converted at least just one third down today, maybe two. But nonetheless, the clock is stopped at 7.13. Vikings getting the call from the sideline. It's a four receiver set, a man goes in motion. Patterson keeps it. He's trying to get away from the pirate defense. They didn't, they weren't fooled for a second. He was wrapped up. Able to get an extra yard there as he extended his arm forward as he went down. Still going to be short. See what Elizabeth City does here. It's fourth down. Fourth down. Will they go for it? It's going to be fourth and maybe one. I think in this place in the field, you got to go ahead and punt it off. You hadn't had success, really. Uh, you don't want to continue to let this score just balloon by giving the Pirates the ball here on the inside the 30 yard line. I think this is a smart call by Coach Jones and his staff to go ahead and punt the ball away and make the Pirates at least have to move the ball down the field and earn this touchdown if they're gonna get one. 6.20 and counting, Yarborough again to punt. Pirate return man standing on his own 40. 
High snap. Yarbrough hesitates. Will punt. It's going to be short. Goes out of bounds. Ooh, it was hard to tell where exactly. I think about the 38 or 39 is where I think they're going to mark it. Wait to see for the official spot. No, they're going to put it right at the 40. So roughly about a nine-yard net gain on the punt. And again, Yarbrough actually recognizing the Pirates weren't rushing, so he took his time to kick it. Um, but I think he was probably hoping for a better result than that, than a, what, a net nine, like you said, a net nine-yard punt. Because with that kind of return, you almost think maybe we should have just gone for it because you're giving them basically the same field position. 6.06 remaining here in this ball game. Pirates come out with a new quarterback, number 17, Dallas Hall, the Richard freshman from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. So you know this is meaningful to him to be out there against these guys from his hometown. Takes a snap, keeps it, pick up of a few yards, five, six yards still on his feet before he's forced out of bounds. We saw at the end of the year last year, the Pirates, uh, Coach Coach Frunchy, not afraid to give guys an opportunity to get out here and play. And this will be good for him because he's probably the, the youngest of the quarterbacks on the staff. Um, as all of those guys are grad students or red shirt seniors. So you definitely, he's what you would think would be the, the future of the him. long distance future. Yeah. Because there's still a couple guys ahead of him on the depth chart that we didn't see today including, as I mentioned before, Isaiah Robinson, the Richard sophomore transfer from Maine. It's going to be a, a handoff to Onoku, who's across the 20 to the 15. Thought he had a chance at the end zone before he was finally knocked out of bounds. Another great run for Onowuka. And maybe you put this kid out there because he is playing against his hometown team, give him a chance. But that tells you, I guess, a little bit about the depth at the quarterback position that you can go skip over guys that may have been higher and you go down to your your lower I guess the guy you have ranked somewhere at the bottom he can come in and he's executing at the level that these other guys are so I wouldn't be shocked if next week against Union if we see Robinson and maybe a little bit more of this young man next week in Hall against Union another team that you would think on paper the Pirates would have a a similar outcome against just to try to Use those as opportunities, like you said, to get guys, you would think, further down your uh, depth chart, some meaningful snaps. Agreed. And I think one of the things you have to say, too, is the quarterback coach, uh, Zach Gross. He's must he's doing a great job with these guys. As you see, they're executing at a high level. Um, yeah, yeah, you're talking about a guy who came in from the pros. He was a quality control coach a year ago with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, working with Jameis Winston and the rest of uh, what Ryan Fitzpatrick and the rest mm -hmm. of those uh, QBs there in Tampa bring some of that expertise here to this pirate program. And, you know, a year ago, Coach Brunty wasn't quite satisfied with some of the results he got from the quarterback position. That's why he swapped them pretty often. But here today, Hall going to try and turn the corner here. Good effort. Forced out of bounds by this Vikings defense as we're now under 345. And you would love to see the going against your hometown kid, hometown team. You would love to see Dallas get a chance to get in the end zone. Um, I think that'll kind of just cap it off for the Pirates and probably give him like that memory that you keep with you forever, like the time you, you could always go back home and say, but remember when. And I'm sure he's looking for that opportunity here now, being inside the 10 yard line on second down. Yeah, I'm sure his teammates understand the same situation, knowing your teammate is playing against his hometown team. We're at the three minute mark here in the fourth quarter. It's second down and goal. High snap, Hall able to corral it. He Tucks it away, He's trying to find somewhere to go. Unfortunately, is brought down. Loss of about six yards on that play. You That's see the difference in experience we talked about earlier. Bradley took a bad snap and was able to get out of the pocket and throw away to save the field position. That time, Hall trying to make a play. Unfortunately, couldn't get out of the pocket and didn't have an opportunity to get rid of the football. Well, I think he wasn't sure what he where he wanted to go, and that's like you say the inexperience. He 
tried to get out. He was wanting to go inside the play. They looked like the tackle blocked out the, or the tight end blocked out the end. When he saw Jersey, he tried to bounce it, but the the tight end was already blocking the defensive end out there. That's where you just got to turn it up field and get down as a quarterback and take what you can get. Five receiver set here for Hall. It's third and goal ball marked at about the 13 now. Hall going to tuck it again. He's got some room right up the middle. Across the five, he's going to get into the end zone. And they say the ball came loose. It looks like they're calling him down at the inch line. We'll see for the officials, because I didn't hear a whistle. I just saw an uh, uh, Elizabeth City player came out of the scrum with the football. So you heard it for there from the official. They rule hauled down, as you said, probably at that one-inch line before you try to extend the ball across the goal line. So fourth and goal, you expect the quarterback keeper here. We got a whistle. Timeout called by Hampton with 127 to go. You want to get this young, get, make sure you call the right play to get this young man in the zone. Uh, and some people may see this up 65 to 7 as you're kind of fourth down. You're going for it, rubbing it in. So we got a media timeout. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching ESPN+. Plus. Back here at Armstrong Stadium, Matt White, Travis Oliver here as Hampton at the one-inch line going to look to try and get the Elizabeth City Native Hall into the end zone, but no, they will take the knee. And that's what I was kind of talking about before we went to the break was, you know, being in that position, that's one of those things where it's kind of seemed like you're running up the score. Uh, I mean, the sportsman thing to do, especially on fourth down, just to kind of take the down, give them the ball back. You don't want to embarrass anybody. And, that's just a little bit of class on the behalf of uh, Coach Punta and his staff, even though as, as an opponent, I feel like don't take it easy on me. Like, I don't want you to take the knee. Go for it and let me get a chance to stop you. You score, you score. So the clock stops here at 125 for the change uh, in possession or turnover on downs. We'll see Elizabeth City come out here. They're probably going to try and run at least two plays to give them a little bit of breathing room. And they, too, don't want to extend this much longer than it needs to be. Vikings come out. Eye formation. They're going to run the ball forward, pick up a couple yards. Clock will continue to run. One ten and counting. You would expect one more play like that. Maybe two, depending on how much time is left on the play clock. But this one is all but over here in Hampton. We thank you for joining us here on ESPN+. Plus. Again, a reminder, next week we'll be back right here as Hampton will play host to another former CIAA rival in Virginia Union. And Hampton will bring home one of their all-time greats in the AD of Virginia Union and Joe Taylor, who is a in 2019 inductee into the College Football Hall of Fame. It's going to be a handoff up the middle, and I think it might be. It was close to a safety. Let's see where the officials will spot the ball. Looked like Elizabeth City was trying to bounce it to the outside. Don't forget, come back. I think the officials took some pity there on Elizabeth City and just marked it the one inch line. And that will do it here for Armstrong Stadium. It's the final three seconds take away. Hampton Pirates 65, the Elizabeth City State University Vikings 7. We thank you for joining us here on ESPN Plus. We'll see you next week as the Pirates play host to Virginia Union. Good night, everybody.